the the G the GUI base the GUI the interface is so slow that it is mm. like it is better to use the uh, the package management commands only to do anything. Because yeah, because Pop takes... OS is very heavy on GUI apps. So instead of Pop OS, you could mm. use if it is an older system, use a bare basic uh, version of uh, Linux, and it will run very fast. Mm. Uh, because Pop OS is very customized and it has a lot of uh, uh, programs which runs in the background to give you that look and feel. So I, it is like outside, maybe I'll discuss later. Yeah, sure, sure. Okay, uh, with that, then I will start uh, with the session. Okay, uh, good evening, everyone. I think uh, it is uh, only right to start with some very basic things which we have learned in the course. Uh, so, I hope you guys are able to access the uh, so one of the uh, PPT which we have shared in the discourse as well. Let me just not in dashboard, up. right? Only in discourse you have shared. Yeah, discourse is there. Yeah. Uh, if you know, because that gives you a basic idea of uh, how the course is. Uh, you know, there are so many concepts which are everywhere. So in which, post it. Did you, which post did you share? When did you share? Um, it's in the very beginning, we have shared uh, in the resources okay. post, which we had, right? Okay. Just put that up and see if it is there. So we click on the name tag itself, it will take you to that uh, PPT, and then you can look at that there. Just give me a couple of minutes. Yeah, who had question? Go ahead, just you can so ask. I just wanted to uh, confirm the syllabus for quiz two. Uh, it's from week one through week seven. Oh, okay, sir. Thank you. Sir, I am in discourse, but how to get the PPT that you uploaded? I will just give you a link of it. Just a second. Check, yeah. Mm -hmm. So maybe pin the post on discourse. Like... I will just send it to you. Yeah, look at that, uh, which is in the chart section. So if you click on the about the course, right, it will open this PDF file right away for you. I'll just briefly go through that, and then I will look at uh, the key concepts one by one. OK. Uh, is my screen visible? So are you talking about the all week slides? Uh, not all week slides. Uh, so yeah, is my screen visible? Yeah. Okay. So yes. uh, just you know, going back to the basics from week one, right? What we have looked at is what uh, you were introduced to a brand new. At least some of you were introduced to a brand new operating system, uh, Linux, and we saw that it is basically based on Unix system. Uh, the way it usually works is you have a, uh, a kernel which operates on the hardware, which manages the resources, uh, how much resource uh, uh, a particular program should be used. And on the top of that shell sits, and this is where all of your uh, automation stuff uh, will go on. And this is what we are learning in this course, shells and some of the programs uh, like set and off, how we can use together uh, to do some automation. So. Uh, we also looked at the file structure hierarchy, right? So root has root has is its own uh, parent folder, right? 
and then we know we have seen that the bin folder is for the binaries uh, then we also looked at etc folder right etc folder which uh, has your configuration files your home folder is where your all the files usually sits in and uh, <coughs> you also look at user uh, folder usr folder in which uh, depending upon users you will have uh, this uh, bin uh, demand lib local and share folders uh, so say you are a different user and you want to install some set of uh, uh, softwares right so it's binaries will sit in this uh, user bin uh, more or less the structure of the file hi structure hierarchy remains the same uh, there is little bit of difference between different distributions but uh, not uh, significant okay uh, so like we said that you know we the course was totally of eight weeks and the most important aspect at least uh, we expect you should uh, be able to handle the files should be able to manage them and you should be able to uh, modify its uh, you know permissions you should understand if it is a hard link if it is a soft link what is an i node and how to work with it and then you should know like you know uh, which which was the basic the first command which we learned regarding the fine handling it was ls command right yes so with the ls command how you actually can uh, 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 look at all the files which are present in the system without even you know uh, interacting with the gui it it allows you to look uh, what resides in each of the folder and we learned about cd mv uh, file you know commands to uh, see what how do we change the directories how do we move uh, directories how do we copy right with cp command and we learned like uh, different aspects of that right i'll also go through that in detail the second aspect which we learned in this course so far is you know how to do process control and how input output control works like we said that yeah this operating system is based on uh, the concepts from the unix uh, which primarily aims to process an input stream and produce it into an uh, into your output screen right so a command takes in an input from your standard in it processes on it and then generates a, a standard output which can be further taken by another command so we can chain number of commands to achieve some goal or else uh, you know a lot of analytics can be conducted just by doing that and in process control you understood you know what are the shells how to identify if it is uh, if the pro if the process is running in the parent shell or it is in the child shell uh, all of that stuff which we learn in the process control the third most important aspect which we learned were you know uh, the shell variables and the basics of the shell scripting right in shell variables we learned how we can assign a particular commands output or as a shell variable itself we also learned uh, uh, you know uh, how to identify uh, what do you call it? Uh, your exit codes right uh, total arguments passed all of those special shell variables we have looked at and then uh, the last part right in the last two weeks what you have learned is some of the built-in tools for example your sed and awk sed grep and awk these three are the built-in tools which comes with almost all the os uh, linux os and with them you can do a lot of textual processing and the very most important aspect of this course was regular expressions the regular expressions allowed you to identify patterns right and then use them for your further processing but the concept of regular expression is not only limited to shell scripting it also allows you to work with um, you know list of other languages such as python you have ruby all of these languages also uses regular expressions to identify patterns in a given file right so uh, uh, basics uh, of uh, regular expressions were covered in this course. So, uh, just to briefly go by week by week, right? Uh, ignore all of this list of commands, okay? So, in the first week, like I said, 
we you were introduced to the terminal uh, what is shell and we looked at very simple command such as ls cd date you know groups files i nodes links permissions so basically all everything you need to know uh, if you log in into a system uh, first we covers everything you need to understand about files files and directories and how to navigate between folders in the second week basically we looked at uh, some of the process control where we looked at uh, ps jobs command so we looked which, at the which set of commands you said uh, we have to ignore no no just don't try to read through all of these commands while uh, we are discussing this okay, because okay. you'll get confused which is why i said just ignore for now but if you look at this right first set of commands will uh, allow you with a basic information about files and directories well uh, some of these commands right for example i propose info help type what is uh, will give you information about other commands uh, which is very useful and which is uh, a primary way we learn about new commands every time uh, when we are dealing with command line interface right a lot of uh, good packages usually have a command line interface for the automation purpose so if you know how to look for help uh, or information about the command in the terminal itself you need not go through uh, their manuals pdf manuals and other stuff like that so the next part which we looked at was uh, shell variables and even before shell variables we also looked at the most important aspect right um, the process control and we looked at process control through the slip command right and uh, uh, the other aspect we looked at where you know brace uh, brace expansion like, you know, parameter expansion in the uh, shell scripting languages you, we looked at exit codes and how to work with them we also looked at how we can use conditionals with command right given a command a should the second command should be executed or if the command a fails the other should be executed we saw that a simple if else can be uh, constructed just by using a single line command in the uh, in the is operating system we also looked at what is standard in standard out uh, standard error and we learned the most important concept uh, uh, in the linux which was about redirections pipes and t okay uh, the third week basically was mostly about the software package management but out of all of that i think there was uh, uh, this pattern matching and the shasam were the two important uh, things which you will be using most of the time uh, you have learned in the third week with the fourth week we go further again with the pattern matching and this week is pretty much important because uh, with the regular expressions you can use grape ox said all three takes this and apart from that you can even use the test command with regular expression uh, to do some kind of uh, modification uh, to a text file that is what we uh, looked in the week five uh, week four in the week six we started looking at you know how to construct shell scripts basically and we looked at the concept of interpreter right so shell scripting is an interpreter right python is an interpreter and by defining that interpreter itself in the shell script right you can execute that without even calling python or a uh, without calling the bash uh, while you are running in the uh, terminal itself so we looked at shebang right that was our interpreter right and then the path uh, for that particular program uh, the interpreter program which we want to use we also looked at the special shell variables and uh, the for loop case statement if statement uh, were introduced uh, in the fifth week. The fifth week, uh, you had the proper uh, uh, programming uh, concepts uh, pulled in, uh, which you needed to use uh, with the, uh, you know, uh, the concepts which I learned earlier uh, in the shell variables. Uh, week six, again, were mostly about uh, hardware, right? Uh, hardware prompt strings uh, command line utilities but the most important of all you have learned about was said so said uh, is a streamline editor right it works line by line and you can use uh, it to 
uh, process really big files by writing just small scripts, uh, be it operating on the specific set of lines or use regular expressions and then do certain operation on those set of lines. Something of that sort uh, can be easily done with the set. And then uh, in the seventh week, you were introduced with the awk uh, command. Uh, awk command, if you look at it, it, look, it will look much more similar to the C programming language in terms of syntax. Uh, the, the power of awk uh, usually comes from the fact that you, you can not only do the, uh, what do you call it? The search, substitute, extract operation, which you could have done with the set, but you can also do calculations and formatting just by using awk. So you can generate entire reports just by using awk, uh, by using awk on multiple files or a really big file and you know get a summary out of it easily uh, with uh, simple uh, awk commands. So uh, these all contents were you know uh, covered till week seven, and then week eight usually is all about Git. Get version control, networking a little bit. And like a lot of students usually uh, don't work on Git and SSH uh, and networking commands, but they are very useful in your day to day life. Because uh, as you know, that uh, if you log on, on a server, you need to know so at least some uh, basic knowledge about this networking command and how to use SSH. And with Git, I feel that everyone who will eventually become developer even uh, he or she will be in the field of data science they will need some kind of version control system uh, in their uh, working environment okay so that is all uh, what we have looked at now we will look at uh, each one of uh, them one by one okay uh, so let me just pull up the <clears throat> yeah, so before we go, right, I just want to uh, uh, get a few answers from uh, you. In ls uh, command, right, in ls command, uh, what does the first character will give you? Anyone can answer. Just raise your hand and answer it. Uh, ls. So which, which once you Once you uh, operate ls l command, right, ls hyphen l. The output of that string. Long, 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 type of the object. Whether it is a file or a directory. Yeah, file directory link or something. Correct. A link or so it will give you first information. The first character will give you information regarding the file type, right? Uh, can you tell me how the permissions are managed? Like yeah, the, yes, it's, uh, you know, R is for read, W is for write, X is execute. No, just you know, one by one. For part directory, for directory, if there is R and X, then we can go into directory and read its constant. And if W is there, then we can delete and append new new files in in that folder. For so files, what if uh, read will allow? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. So tell me the first three uh, lines, right? Are for which permission? Group owners. permission, other permission, or owner user, permission? First, owner, first, owner, first, owner. User, first user, first three characters is user, then three group, then three others. Good. And where can I get the information about number of hard links? Uh, just after that, there, there is a uh, number mentioned. Right? That will give you information about how many hard links you have. So can you tell me for an empty folder, how many hard links the folders will the folder will have? Two. Two. Why two? Uh, first hard link will parent be in, folder and current in the folder. parent folder. In parent folder means suppose there is a, a folder one which is inside A. So inside A there will be one hard link. And in folder in itself, there will be one more hard link that will referring to its own. Referring to its own. Right. So can you tell me what is an inode and what does that stores? Like what information does an inode number stores? Inode stores uh, the specific file lo means a hard link location. Hard, a hard link location. Uh, can you just share your screen and show me one example? What hard link stores? How will you find out if you want to see it's what is there in the hard link? 
anyone uh, is fine yes so sorry anyone? but i didn't yeah it's okay rithik i mean others uh, who have some knowledge of uh, i notes can they answer so what is the question i note so what does i note stores how will you look at it so it is so, the actual location in the memory of uh, right. of, of a file so if like so, there could be like in case of hard links the i note number is same because it is just pointing towards the actual uh, location where the thing is stored and that is why when we delete one hard link and if there is another the original file is still there even if we delete yeah. the hard link but what does i note number has like all, what all metadata does i note number stores you mean the sector blocks and those yes like sector block file type a lot of information is stored right within an inode which uh, which defines the file itself right if you delete any one of it the file will get corrupted so do you know which command can we use to check uh, uh, the inode number the uh, the metadata of inode number i'm not sure like lsi gives you the i node but then i'm not sure what else anyone like this i think this command you learned in first or second uh, week uh so have you looked into stat command uh no net stat yes but not stat. yeah yeah so try doing a stat command followed by a file any file which you have right and look at all the information which is being stored all that information usually stored in your uh, i don't number so it's like an address book basically that i note number has all of that information stored for each of the file if you delete any of that information if any of that information is corrupted the file will get corrupted automatically so yeah that is just for you to test out okay so that uh, okay excuse me sir one question so mm -hmm. um, let's say there are uh, four hard links to one file mm -hmm. right the i node number itself is the same but mm -hmm. where is the counter actually stored because if i delete three hard links the mm. file is still there right the object is still there it's only when i delete all the hard links that are there the yes. actual file so where is is that counter stored the counter in, so wait, wait uh, we just looked at should... ls we looked at ls hyphen l right that command yeah, yeah. so that command uh, and even if you look at the stat command itself it will give you that information okay thank you sir i think uh, uh, this uh, i node number is just a logical way of interpreting everything means in hard drive it can be stored in multiple locations but i node number stores all the information that where it is stored right yes that is why i said it is like an address book it has all the information regarding the file uh, where it is stored how it is stored what are these file permissions what type of file it is when it was created when it was last modified all of this information is usually stored in that okay so so on deletion ju just only i know number get deleted or inside file also get deleted hello yeah you are not audible now audible hello hello am i audible now yes sir yeah yeah sorry i just missed some call so just tell me uh, sir i asked that on deletion of file just mm -hmm. i know number get deleted or inside the file also get deleted Uh, when you delete a file, the inode number is not deleted. It just deletes the information. Uh, 
so say you have two hard links right and you delete okay. one no, sorry sir, means uh, there are some recovery tool that can re recover the deleted files even if you delete from yes. our trash okay. mm. so what mm. get deleted means technically the technically files name right the file uh, link which links to i node gets deleted okay so even if you have that i node number and there is no link uh, there is no way to map that i node number with the file name you will not have an information what all there is in that file basically so when you run these uh, tools right what they will look at were there any clusters of data or this information the i node information is present in your hard disk something similar to that which will uh, give them so uh, even in the recovery tool, I feel that you don't get exact names in some of the cases. You will get some arbitrary names generated by the system. And inside, you will have all these files. So you have to figure out which file was what, uh, even after recovery, uh, recovery of the data. OK. So there, there is some linking between inode and main file storage that get deleted. Yes, yes. So when you actually fully, completely format a hard drive, right? At that point of time, everything is everything gets wiped out. But uh, if you just simply delete it and assume that you know the file is being deleted and there is no trace of it on the hard drive, that is not true. It just simply deletes the information uh, what that I know corresponded to which file. That is very dangerous. So it can be rewritten. No, sorry. So that is why there is special software for purging data, like not just data. Yes, yes. There is also a command if you guys have time, just do try shred command. That also will uh, uh, mangle up all the file. Yeah. And sir, uh, on same line, these inode number get created when new file get uh, means new file get stored, or inode number are always there and right? it just get assigned. I know numbers are always, you know, as when you format your system for the first time, right, uh, with your OS. At that point of time, set, set you know, the I know numbers are fixed basically. So wh when you format it for the first time, a fixed amount of I nodes will be created. Okay, and these I know numbers are then assigned values uh, with the file and its information in it. So in some of the cases, uh, if in future, if you're working on server or something and you have uh, way too many small, small files coming in and getting stored on your system, you'll see that your system will start slowing down. And even if you have like say 20 GB, 30 GB data left, the computer will tell you that there is no not enough space. So it is basically because of uh, the inode, total inode numbers got exhausted. Uh, because of because of all those small small files uh, taking up the space, this uh, taking I up know, all the i nodes. So this i node is applicable for Linux only or Window also. That I can't confirm right now, but definitely yeah, it is for know, Linux. Seeing like the cache is ca are cache and i node related. Cache uh, as in what like cache for like memory or cache for that... process. No, no, like we said that a uh, lot of inode gets like uh, if there are if the right. inode is like full. Not because of cache. Cache is different. If it is stored in your system, right? In one of the folders uh, in your file hierarchy, right? You will store that uh, in the temporary folder. All of these temporary files, right? Every time uh, okay. when you're done with uh, using, you know, uh, internet browser, you will clean all of the history, right? It will just wipe out all of those small, small files. Basically, so if you have all of these uh, small small file like you know accumulated everywhere, yeah, the system will also get slowed down because of that. Okay, sir. Yeah. So let's sir, go. Where to is the, the PPT next. link in the link you provided, sir? Uh, I just uh, sent you the link in the chat box, right? You just click the title of that post. Rithik, I shared the exact drive link as well. So you can just go to that Google Drive link, and that is the exact link for the file. Yes. So going back to the original question, what all different types of files chat. which we looked at in? 
Yeah, in one of the questions in the OPPIR, the question was you needed to identify the symbolic link and hard link and only print the unique ones, right? How do you uh, uh, distinguish between a symbolic link and a uh, sir, L and D, sir. L. L will tell you it is a symbolic link. What other in where else can you see that? There are no numbers. Uh, sir, at, at the file name, there, there is also mentioned. So if you run LSLI, right? Or LSL also, LSL. Let's see that. Let me just share my screen. Yeah, if you just open an LSL, right, you'll see that this is your uh, symbolic link, right? But this is also a way to uh, identify your symbolic link. It tells you where exactly the uh, original file resides. So in that question, either you could have used L or you could have used the uh arrow to identify them sir what sir what could be reason that symbolic ring uh, link i know number is very less means one two four seven like what for these these are symbolic no these no? Yeah, sorry sorry, sorry. Symbol. these are your i nodes i know number right sir yes these are your i know numbers so why they are very less? No, no, no. I think it, it is size, sir. I know number we need to provide minus i of some. Yeah, I. There you go. Sir, why they, these are very less for symbolic link for 12, 15, like that? No, no. If you look at it, this is not a symbolic link. So these are the, like, I am currently in your bin folder, right? When you write your uh, OS, right, for the first time, these were the ones who, which will get first uh, put in your system, basically. Which is why you will see that their number is uh, small as compared to the files which you are working on. You see how uh, neatly so it is going from end to... Which file created first, right? meaning yeah yeah basically uh, based on that it's so like uh, to uh, 100 LS. file will be created before than 200 i don't number right mm -hmm. can you come again i know number file will be created 100 i know number file will be created before 200 i know number file no the i know numbers you know there is no such significance, okay? The chronology doesn't matter. The sequence doesn't matter, basically. These are just the store, you know? Uh, if you say that for a PIN code, uh, you know, what is the Mumbai's PIN code? 400001. And say 400013. Does it make any difference whether, you know, whether it was one or whether it was 16 or something like that at the end? It's just an address, basically. OK? Yes, sir. OK. So that is that. Uh, then, yeah, so we looked at uh, character files also. Was there block files, socket files, and named pipe. All of these things are also there. But for our, the scope of our course, we only limited ourselves to regular files, uh, which are identified by dash, right? D by directory, L for symbolic link. OK. So what command will you use to modify the uh, permission? CH. CH? CH? MOD. CH mod. CH mod, OK. And so can you tell me uh, what, uh, if I say CH mod 711, what will it say? Uh, all permission for user and mm -hmm. only i think one 
for 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 user uh, for group and other there will be same permission that will be uh, no no sorry that is execute execute yeah. command for users i mean others in group group and right so yes so when we use numbers one stands for execute four stands for read five stands for read and execute six stands for read and write and seven stand for read write and execute i think that's there in the sir one question notes yeah if file has only execute it hmm. will not be executed without write right? then there Sorry? is no use if, oh. only if file has execute permission not read permission hmm then we you should execute, execute find right file. why no read permission is required for execution also why so i am not sure but uh, maybe when we execute the interpreter will read the file yeah hey, interpreter reading a file is not not a problem you won't be able to see the content of the file you can execute it but you cannot read it you cannot write it right so for execution file. user is not reading the file right so even if the read is, like is, the... read is not provided then you won't be able to even list the file right no file listing will be uh, if a read is not provided to you right for a particular directory or something those who, you shouldn't be able to see them uh, in that directory Yeah, so, Sir, so can you create an executable easy. here? Right? So, Let's see, do I have an executable? Let's say, yeah. So, one neat little trick: if I want to write a file just by using cat, how will I do that? Cat and enter. Or cat, cat and redirect uh, with the file. Output output output. File. Redirect like this, and then like this. No, the other other redirection. No, no. Like remove the greater than. Just yes, greater than. Just greater than. Hmm. And the file name. Say, the script dot sh. And then enter. Yeah. Okay. Now so... you can start typing whatever you want in the script. Okay, so how should we go with the this shebang, right? We need to put bin bash. Next, let's just echo or SQ. What? How do we do? Just hundred or ten like that? And how should I uh, exit out of this? Control D. Pretty good. So let's see. Ls. Now, uh, now you got to change the permissions. Yeah. So ch mod. So let's see what is permission. Ls. Yeah, just give it execution. Uh, yeah. So tell me what should I do? Ch mod. Just give one one one. One 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 two so then you it has all execution permissions. Okay, so let's see. So I think it answers so, the question that there should be some read permission somewhere. So say now we have removed the permission from the owner, mm. then from the group and from the other. Say I give permission only to the owner. So what should we do? So it is if you want to give him read, then it is add five five one one. Read and execute. For group, you are saying so middle middle number should be five. No, we don't want to give it to group because we are doing it right now. 
all right yes, right now let's do it and there you go what if i take that out again and give it to what do you said to give it to group add five yes, like so yeah one, one one five one yes okay okay that won't work then what is the next iteration one one five But this will also not work because you are giving it to the others, but so, you are still the same user, right? So the person executing should need yeah. that means the read. Yes. So the, no, like I am the one who created it. Suppose you come and log in into the system and you are from others group. Yeah, then uh, you are trying to execute be able this, to use right? it. It will work for you, but it will not work for me. Correct. So the person so executing it, it should have read and execute. Read and execute permission. OK. That is there. Uh, we also looked at touch command, right? What does touch command do? It really updates the modified data. Right, and it can create a file. Touch, uh, <coughs> if the file does not exist, it will create the file. Otherwise, if the file exists, it doesn't do anything. No, it just no, it, updates. When it modifies, it, it updates the. If file exists, it will change the content. I mean, yes, modify. It will change the timestamp. Yes. Yeah, correct. So, pardon, I missed the discussion. Like uh, using touch to change the timestamp or something. No, no, you don't use touch to change the timestamp. When you use touch on a file, it updates the last modified date. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, hello. Uh, should it do nothing? Should it keep that you know timestamp as is and because the date is same? No, no, it will change the timestamp. Right, it should change the timestamp. Yeah, it... What about date? Will it change the date as well? It depends on when you are using the touch commands. Yeah, so when I when I say it changes the timestamp, it includes everything. Yes, date and time, both. Yeah. If I do touch here now, sorry. See, we see that the date as well as the time, both fields are changed. Yeah, okay, touch, that touch, is one literally, of the touch literally means touch. <laughs> yeah. Touch and go. Yeah, when you touch the file, yeah. and it changes the. Yeah, okay. So tell me uh, if I want to see the, uh, you know, uh, you call the size of my hard drive or something of that sort, right? What what command we used? Du, I think. Df. Du or D D disk free, right? Or something? Uh, D DF. DU minus F? No. Let me see. Disk utilized. Okay. Summary of disk usage. Yeah, that is what you. What is the other way of looking at this command? One line? Uh, free? DU. No, no. Uh, like free is a good command. It will tell you all of the cinema. So free also comes with H, hyphen H. 
it gives you information regarding what memory right oh, yes, sir. yeah yeah so i'm asking uh, if i want to ask you know i don't want to get all of this help okay this is just too long for me to read i want one line explanation what is that command what is yeah estimates file space usage and df report file system disk space usage both of them are same are they so df is more on free space right no oh, so df h will give all of this information to me if i do d n h what is it doing it is going everywhere right in all of the folders it is going in files it is so i think it is reporting d df is only for the current folder and du is for the disk no no level, no? no 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 if you look at it what is du and what so is du is like going recursively to everything right With yeah the... so basically the plays here the report file system disk space usage estimate file space usage so du will go for each of the file and it will report you that while df will look at your uh, general disk space so when i do dfh these are the different partitions which i have and it will tell me how much it is being used where it is mounted and all that information so it's an aggregate okay. level at a mount point yes so that is that so we looked at that uh, anything else which we are missing out on basic operations basic Can file management a little bit uh, a little bit about find find command find command the find the find is uh, a bigger utility will go I got there confused between du and df sir what could could you uh, execute again du so if you look at what df is and what is du you see that du is saying that estimate file space usage okay it is estimating the file space usage and it is file system disk space usage so when you say file system uh, these are your different uh, uh, what do you call yes, different sir. partitions or mount points which i have these are my file different file system and what size it is and how much it is used is what df is providing me and when i do du let's look at and du summarize this usage of the set of files recursively for directories say i don't want to go recursively what is the option max depth is there right so hyphen d and we can do one oops What was that? Du minus d one mm. and then h and then h. So this is giving me the you know, top level information. But again, these are all files. Files, okay. So that is that. Uh, what you you ask for find command, right? So what what? No purpose do we use find command? Basically for finding files in the different places. Files. And it goes across yeah. directories, everything, right? Hmm. So how do we control this? I think we have to give the path. Find dot will look in the current working directory. And then you have to specify whether you're looking for files or directories. Hmm. So do we have max depth here also? Yeah, yes. find then path, then we can provide match depth, type of file, name, and uh, we can it also execute. A... Hmm? We can also execute commands. Find then path, hmm. then type, we can provide name, we can provide. Yeah, find will, you know, can be used with exec also. So whatever you yeah, found, when you talk about exec, we can do can some you operation on that. Briefly talk about exec. How do we use it? 
sure, sure. Exec and eval. Uh, what else we have? Eval. So what does eval do? Eval evaluates 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 an expression and returns true or false, right, or zero or one. No, 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 that is not eval. See, the basic what is given in the lectures was it combines two strings and executes it like a command. Hmm? Eval will basically take string values and execute like a command. For but example, uh, can you elaborate more on how it's exactly used? So do you know about, you know, you can also run some command using bash, right? Just saying bash. Bash will uh, create it like a subshell, right? Yes. So what does eval will do? Can anyone recall what sir ex the example sir has given? I think he created two strings, gave a certain commands or something within the strings, and then did the eval with string one space string two, and that executed the command in a subshell. Mm. I don't know anything more so, than that. Does this, is it similar to this? So when we do echo, say echo high, it is echoing high. If I do this, will it work? We can do in, in inverted comma and eval. The output will be same, I think. Oh, eval then? Angali. No, Angali. Like this? you pass you pass other commands, right? So you can say eval one command, second command all. Yeah, under inverted. Yeah. Uh, how else can we do the say get this output? The same way. Yeah, Will no. this work? Uh, yeah. No. Okay, it is no, executing no. subcell and returning high. Okay. No, no, no this no, is no. command. This is command substitution. High, but high is not. This, this command substitution. What is the difference between command substitution and eval command then? How it is getting evaluated? We can well, command it, it is in a subshell, right? String as a command, I think. Mm -hmm. Just replacing mm -hmm. echo hat. Sir, in case of this back text in this command thing, dollar and then this. So this is like this happens in a subshell. So in yes. the subshell, that variable high will not be available. Will this work? High is coming in outside and outside high will not work. And maybe maybe if we do uh, source echo high, maybe that works. Why? So maybe eval create eval spawns a new subshell. So and eval is essentially system. asking, yes, whatever which comes after the eval, right? It is asking it to uh, execute it as is. Okay. So in in this particular scenario, and in this particular scenario, what is happening? The inner, uh, what do you call this? Um, inner command gets executed, basically. It, it expands, and it produces output high. And that high is given to, again, to this uh, your parent shell. But high is not a command, right? So which is why it is saying, say, if I say echo date, will it work? Sorry. Dollar eco date, right? Yeah, something similar. The inner command will run and then pass to parent and will give error. No, in this case, it should print the date. Yeah. Okay. There is command substitution, right? Everything is there. Okay, eco date will be echoed and passed to parent, and parent will identify date. 
exactly so you can just printing date in the inner run and it is just passing it to your outer shell and the date when it is run it is giving you this output so in the same scenario if i run eval echo date what should be the output will be the timestamp current time stamp. i think date will come only date good why so because it is running in parent only not not uh, under sub -sub. correct so that is the difference between when you do command substitution and when you are using eval eval can you think of a use case where you can use eval in this fashion sorry can you explain this i i'm a little confused here so when we use eval yeah we can do well when when user gives some file name and we want to lsl on that when you use eval echo date right what I'm not sure but let me just explain okay uh, yeah can anyone try to explain for him i'll just correct it uh he is specifically still confused between eval why it is printing date here date as the string and it is giving you a date in this particular scenario in in the last case that eval echo date uh if what eval do it it pick the su substring echo date and just execute it so date uh, echo date will uh, give date but in just before dollar echo date it create a sub cell and execute the inner part so when in sub cell inner part get executed date will be print out in inner sub cell after that that output of inner sub cell will be given to parent cell and that parent cell is this terminal and when in terminal this dollar echo date will be replaced by date so, so in basically terminal, what date command will run what is, and it friday yeah so let, then yeah. let me ask you this so in the dollar echo date that we have done if i add a third command there after date with a space let's say that is ls then what happens yes. hmm. you tell me should i put a comma here or should i not no just leave it to i mean just a space so it will say invalid option or invalid input i think date command to date know. command right good so and the last so the and what about so the last element here in invalid yeah okay so basically what it is doing it is echoing this text right date ls to this particular prompt then this prompt is executed on date ls the string because the ls is not an uh, Uh, option for date it will say that in case of eval it is just running it once what it is doing it twice here on this here you see there is two times it is when it comes to the parent prompt it gets again evaluated that is not the case with the eval command in eval command whatever you put after this will get uh, executed so in that command substitution if we put a, a semicolon after date then both command should get executed right date and ls no no come again can see in that command substitution you have the dollar braces no. echo date semicolon ls then two commands should get executed no yes no yeah that Why? will not get executed correct right. because that is the logic that is the logic we are using right it will also start getting executed so no, that no, will no. be possible no, sir, no, put a semicolon and enter, two commands should get executed. So LS no. will print and then all LS, whatever it prints, will also try to get executed. Yeah. No, now we are there two separate commands on the command line. Date, just, semicolon. Just, yeah, but again, enter LS and will. Yeah. 
Eight will run after that. I think error will come. So see, I yeah. see if if instead of echo, if instead of echo you have ls first, and then you say echo date, then then the result will be very different because it will run both the commands. I think what's happening is echo the command echo expects a parameter. No, without even the semicolon. Oh, without even the semicolon. Yeah. Yes, command search. So in, in this case, it will try to find something known as echo and yeah, see, it's saying that only. It's no, not like do, that. If you do how echo, does it ls, echo, echo date, then it may work. Yes, right? no, no, my question is, how does it know when the command stops? And then, Which and then it stops. Command. What is the term? Maybe you can try with the and end No, no, sir. Maybe you can try with and end. ls, and end, echo date. ls? And and then ls and and echo date. Okay. okay. And then so that is the whole command then basically. Okay. Gromax command not found. Because it will ls first, and the moment it does ls first, then it will try to um, append to that. But why we are just doing ls? Yeah. See, Gromax is the first one in ls. We can do See, something. Gromax is the first one that is trying to execute. But do du sir instead of ls or something else sir. if i don't want to use this output what should i do what was the null. 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 where okay. so we null. don't want null. whatever null. it is null. saying right right should it work now yes sir it will print date i think right So your ampersand is a special character which has essentially said my command ends here. Okay. No, your double and is for what? No, the first execution, second get executed. Yeah, or or is when if first works, then don't run the second one. So if I take this out, do you think now LS should print? Yeah, it should, no? I mean the two no. two time day echo date. With and and sorry, tell me sir, what sir, what should I do? Sir, and and should be there, but uh, just write uh, date. Ls and and just date, not echo date. No, no, no ls, no, no, echo date should be there. Ls delete, hmm. delete ls and write date only. What does it do then? Look at your date's first string, right? FRI. So, uh, sorry, sir, but I'm still Could you reverse not it? clear about the concept of yeah. command yeah, just, substitution. Just, well. I just think, think I about, yeah. yeah, yeah. Just think about this thing, okay? Now you are running this command, okay? You are running date and you're saying and and echo date, okay? What is the output of your first command? It's this is the output of your first yeah. Command, right? Yeah. Right. It gives you fried days, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Now that output is expanded from the inside, it will go to the outside. Once it goes outside, does fry FRI is a command? No, it's not. Right. So it just simply tells me that there is an error. There is no command called as FRI. So that's why when it comes out of it, right? Whatever. So anything which will give you an standard output right will create a problem so which is why we usually sell it to dev null if you do that this should work fine because the second command is getting executed in this scenario right this output of the second command is what just date right yeah and the first command you have a full string sir, now you're trying to put sir sir in, yeah. in first command we can pipe it to a file so that we can weave that how the what is going to the thing in in this dollar date and and yeah after that after date at the end just pipe it to a file or write it to a file so you you mean to say in this command i should just simply pipe it to a file 
or redirect it to a file right no no yeah, not single see. i want both command means all thing get to the file output so both, like so both will both will return in file or we need to grep dot and then write to file no no grep what sir i want to write this whole thing in a file so one way i am thinking mm. just pipe it to grep dot and after that uh, redirect to a file or ju directly just redirect at the echo date and let's see file let's just do one by one okay date dot txt and then at the end because you know what because once you run this command right the output should go somewhere from this command this command is successful only then this will you know execute so if this also executes then put that also to date dot txt so now look at cat it dot txt got it the first output will be your friday whole date and the second output will be just state if you try to do only for the last one could it work it's spelling mistake sir where no no correct sir correct sir, sir can you pipe it to grip dot and then redirect to date no no we should still look at the content so the second command right after the first command got executed successfully the second also got you know executed successfully and output of the second command is you know got stored into date.txt okay so whatever was the output of the first command right date that will start you know getting executed in the uh, prompt the first letter uh, first word is your fri again this is not a command it is not found so you will get all of this error message in this scenario basically okay uh say for an awk command right echo uh, somebody said about this right let's say file one file two file three i want to send it to awk and then just print dollar one what it should give me file one column file two column file three first record okay. okay so the hypothesis which you said that you know awk automatically looks at the delimiter is wrong say in the same string if i use like this yes. Then what file give one, me? file one file two right hmm. say if i use comma here instead now file one colon uh, everything sorry yeah so all of it will get printed yeah, in this scenario uh, field separator uh, space yeah so how do we define field separator I want to give Can two we, field separators. We do FS or or like this, yes. Yes, sir. we do FS and then we use it. So either you can, so this is one way you can do that. You can get file one. If you want to look at file two, what should I do? Dollar two. We'll give you. And dollar three will give you so okay. You can use multiple delimiter. Other way, tell me. I'll just write it. You can just prompt. So begin. Begin and under begin block. FS we can. FS. Uh, what is FS? Field separator. Yes. So should we use the same technique which we used here? Yeah. Colon and so colon. We can use... You got the same output as before so a quick question to you people uh, can you 
let's let's just pull up a data file okay let's see if i have a data file here So I have, say, yeah. So I want you to tell me a regular expression which will extract the date by using grep. Just fs comma dollar two. No, no. I want you to tell me the regular expression to get only the date. From this, um, sir, we have to use like we can use grep and then uh, search for that comma, and then like between the commas, and then we have to do big like, grep o. We have to use, and then we can do the cut command, and then we can. Sir, we can simply uh, use the digits like zero to nine four times, then a slash hyphen, then zero hmm. to nine two times with a hyphen, and zero to three with a hyphen, and uh, we will word bound it. So this okay, will so only give the uh, dates. So, uh, so grape hyphen O should I use for that? Yes, sir. What does hyphen O does? Only output okay. of the pattern matching. Of the only pattern. match pattern, right? It will. Yeah, output. match pattern. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So should I use uh, E? Do you want? So just tell me first with the basic regular expression. So single inverted comma double inverted comma. Single, sir. Single. Okay. Now tell me. You said what? Uh, Zero to nine. Yeah. Then uh, thirdly places. With uh, four, time. four times. So we have to escape the curly braces as well, because okay. we are using BRE. Mm. Then. And then a hyphen. Mm. And then again zero to nine. Uh, curly two braces. times. Curly braces two times. <laughs> Like so, yeah. Okay. Then and then again, zero to nine, two times. Curly. Target the word bound in initial and at the end. Mm. So do we need to this do a word boundary? May not be needed. Not needed. I just check without that. Hmm. Oh, sorry. We, I didn't uh, the file. Yeah, file. <laughs> What is the file's name? Financial records. So, did I need to use cut command? Anything of that sort? Nothing, right? Even word boundary. Yes. Sir. What yes, exactly sir. we were asking was just to print the pattern, right? Matching pattern. And this, and this was the exact name. pattern. Is and what we were asking. We want to Sorry? sort it by. On same line, we want to sort it by the. Third column and then second column. Okay, so let's do. Ah, you tell me what should I do next? I need to sort it, but how? I I am not sure. There in minus k option, something like that. So man sort. Okay. So blank dictionary order. Ignore case general numeric. Ignore non printing. So we have to use a numeric sort, right? Mm. Minus Where is n. numeric sort? Minus, minus n. Yeah. Okay. That is there. Next, what if we want to tell it? The column, right? Then we can use the numeric sort and only by uh, third and second column. Preference will be third column, then second column. No, let's just sort by the first column first. Okay. How do I differentiate the column? Uh, Sir, then uh, we have to define the delimiter as hyphen, right? Yeah. So how do you define delimiter? Uh, I guess minus minus t or a small t will be the uh, field separator. Mm, see. Mm -hmm. Hyphen t is field separator. You set instead for non-blank to blank. T is for temporary tree. Mm -hmm. Okay. So 
we go with this, then sort hyphen T and colon. Oh, sorry, hyphen, sorry. So just hyphen like this, or should I put it in the yes, sir. single yeah. inverted commas? Single and then, inverted. then we have to select uh, the first, first occurrence, right? So just let me just go back, man, sort, and look at the key option. Hmm. Where is it? Yeah. Sort via key, location and type. Yeah. So your location is what? The first location, right? Which we wanted to do. Now we wanted to do. Sir, there is respect. one thing. Uh, we can simply write it uh, without using the inverted comma. Like whatever uh, field separator we are using it. Hmm. Like minus T space, then hyphen. Yeah, see, an another way to do this is to uh, replace the dashes yep. with black, uh, no Just space. space hyphen, I guess. So then the entire thing becomes a number, and you can sort it by that. And also uh, use n minus n also, like for so numeric sort. We can do tr. Yeah, remove the and dash. And then dash with nothing. 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 And then sort right. numeric, and net just sort numeric. Uh, but your TR with nothing is not working. Uh, why is that? Oh, it's. Uh, there so tell me said uh, option. Uh -huh. Your yeah, TR is one way. Tell me said said option. I want to replace the hyphens yeah, with nothing. Said so, uh, uh, inverted comma substitute. Uh, uh, hyphen with there is no uh, hyphen nothing nothing yes globally. i guess that there is a there is a space not hyphen now no like no, no. We are trying to I no no you're not changing the file you're only changing the output okay, yeah. okay. so if you look yeah, at so this the output is still the same when hmm. i put this head command where i am saying the substitute dash with nothing globally so now you'll get yeah. a date number now hmm. yeah and then you can just say sort by the numeric sort then minus n right uh, what is it that's it and uh, how do i set uh, ascending or descending i can do that ascending or descending let's look yeah, at that. Whatever, whatever is the requirement uh, i guess it uh, by default takes in ascending order and if okay. we use a, a R minus R, then it will uh, do it in descending order. Okay. Hyphen R. Yeah. So you can see that it, uh, you know, 2020 is the last one. And 2023, I think, before when we did just with that, we have 2023, 12, 20. Now you tell me, uh, I want to put the dash back again. How will I do that? Now you can do it by position, right? Uh, hmm. I have to do cut and add and cut. Uh, no idea. <laughs> Actually, no idea. No. What all commands which we can use? We will have to like. Uh... Maybe like, because we have to count the number of because we know the pattern is there four, two, and then yeah. So basically, the fifth proposition needs to be dash, and mm. yeah. eighth position needs to be dash, right? How do we insert? How do we insert column? Mm. Can we use said uh, insert a character after fourth? Just that. Sir, we can also use awk, like uh, we can iterate it and then... No, I want very simple solution. <laughs> we, let's not get into awk because Sir, could you then it the will take a lot of time to come up with it. Just imagine this. We have this, what, how many? Eight characters, right? I want a dash after four characters. Is it possible with said? Uh, tilde four, like uh, with every fourth occurrence? 
we that could is repeat. your fourth line right not fourth Achha. character yeah. in a line the fourth character should be like there should be an extra character as a fifth character basically just search sir, and there i sir there is i but i am not sure the i option is for line i is for uh, the file i guess if you want to change uh, everything in the file not just the output no no can okay, you tell me <clears throat> it is for inline edit sir no you know already the uh, how do you call it uh, the regular expression right so just by using regular expression can you tell me anyone sir we can substitute after four character comma and comma yeah what does like and yeah, do we, sir like upper case we do upper case and and will take the and will take the previous uh, merged string sir we can do that back substitution thing i don't know like we we group the uh, just like we, and we have groups yeah like we have it said we have groups because like we have a group of 4 we have a group of 2 and then we have a group of 2 right so we do that group and then we do that uh, that after the first group insert something then after the second group insert something then after the third the third group we do not have to insert anything okay yeah, now so you actually all using all of so uh, what we can do is we can take the mm. first four right mm. first so, four YouTube, and yeah. replace it with five elements right and then do the same thing for the other two and the other two i think grouping is the same. sir i think the grouping one will work okay just, just tell me like you know how will you do the substitution so is it substitution Instead. then substitution and then we have to escape the bracket of, uh, four characters yeah. Yeah, sir so s uh, said what options you need to use in set Uh, s and then uh, forward slash then i think dot right but only search and replace will work search and replace will work how yes sir sir like uh, sub, uh, search for uh, the uh, One, two, first three, four, four characters in a group tell me and so search for uh, first four first, character yeah, any first, character dot yeah, yeah character. four sir in a group is yes, a group we have to do group because and then we, we will make uh, uh, make two more groups of two characters no, and, no, then will, okay. uh, and then no, we will and then we will yeah just let's like focus like. putting a dash after you know first four characters forward slash and Tell comma me. globally sir comma globally that's comma. it uh, and comma sir because we want the previous character hmm. and comma so it is repeating I don't want it to be globally, right? Then. Yeah, remove globally. What should I do then? One. Yeah. Or should I just remove one also? Yeah, yes, sir. Remove, remove one. First occurrence will do. First occurrence will be taken. So like this, I have written in the chat. Okay. So now you tell me. Uh, I want to replace it with dash. So no need to do. Hmm. Easy. So tell me the next set command now. S. So you are separating two commands, right? In set with semicolon. Yes. Tell me next one. Again two. Then. And. No. So this second S. command will take will start from the sixth character, or will it start from the beginning? Let's try. Okay. Tell me. Dot slash two characters. And S. And sorry, and and, and dash. Point. That's it. Yeah. So we need so, to six character. Ah, uh, you have to give it four, five characters. Six, no, seven character. I think we need to do. Yeah, correct. Four, five, six, seven. Yeah. 
eight. Oh, we replaced the seventh one. Eight, yeah. Mm. Okay. Can we look at you the old old command? Okay. So, do I need to go through all the loops and everything? No, no. It is just the way you are writing your uh, regular expression will make a lot of difference. And okay. knowing some of these commands. So Even if you really, don't know these commands, right? Definitely these kind of help will be provided in the exams. That's not an issue. Okay. But well, so one question yeah. here. See, you mentioned that no need to use loops, but that is fundamentally a different way of thinking about the problem, right? So yes, but there is a two way, there are two different ways of going about a problem. Either you can completely build a program from a scratch, or you can use already tools which are available to you to come up with a solution. Even in Python, you never go and build all the libraries which are already built. Right? Yeah, yeah, correct. If you are going to use Pandas, are you going to write all of the program which, uh, which you know, Pandas has for merge, cut, join, anything all of that sort? No, right? You will know the library how to use it, right? You need to know the syntax, a proper way of syntax of doing it. The same logic applies here also. Imagine all of these tools are, you know, already built in functions and you need to use it to solve a problem. Of course, programming way you can do it, but that is not the intent of this course. See, yeah. writing something of this sort in one line is better or writing 10 or 20 lines code is better. And you, uh, if you can even check, you know, at the end of the day, if, even when you write a big code, which iterates through all of these entries, right? And it is storing. Look at the resources which are used and how fast your program was. This is a very small set of data. Imagine yes, this, you're doing on a huge file. Yeah. So file and multiple from that file point of view, different. learning the tool will always help you. And you know, just playing around with, you know, see, we have used one regular expression here, another here, another here. May it could be very simple. It could be a little tricky one. Like in this scenario, this one was tricky, right? To figure it out. So sometimes you, if you guys feel that, right, this is too much to do on your own. It is always good habit to, you know, have your own groups, or you can even attend these TA sessions where people take part into discussions and you can take a problem, break it down and try to approach it. Not necessarily exactly this problem will come, right? But something similar you may encounter in future. So knowing your regular expression is very important. The, uh, the crux of this exercise was try to learn the regular expressions to the core. They will help you a lot in a lot of tasks, especially by, you know, when you want to use the inbuilt tools. OK, so what was our so, so one, one question I have here is, so uh, mm. what is your expectation in time in terms of time required to provide a solution like this by someone who is average oh no no see if if i want to ask this question in the exam right if i so where is that solution yeah so something of this sort hint i really feel that student will require because this will take time for them to figure it out this shouldn't take much time to figure it out. This shouldn't take much time to figure it out. No, no, this whole problem if I give statement, this, change, if this is yeah. given as a problem saying that sort mm -hmm. the dates, right, in ascending or descending, mm -hmm. then are you expecting the student to take 15 minutes to solve it or five minutes? I am expecting at least, you know, 15 to 30 minutes to solve. Okay. I can't expect, <laughs> even if we sit to, you know, build questions for your people, we feel that at least half an hour, you know, if, if you are an average student, half an hour should be enough for you to solve okay. one question. So there will be a few questions which will take, we should take ideally only five minutes. There will be questions which should take at least half an hour for you to process through all of this information. Okay. So we are the, the reason also like we, are, we want to push the this console, right? This is terminal, this fast, right? Yeah, yeah. Correct, correct. You get to see this in real time. This is what we want to bring it to our exam terminal also. So that you don't get deterred by the look of look and feel of your exam portal, basically. It should be friendly for you to, you know, play with it and come up with a solution. 
No, I, I, I mean, I, I can say one thing that if anyone wants to be a data scientist, the mm. combination of grep, set, awk, and regular expressions, yes, I mean, should be part of your toolkit. Yes. Otherwise, this it's and possible. yes, little bit of file management, if you know, it will become breeze for you to crunch through numerous, you know, humongous data when you are, even if you are, you know, not working for a huge corporation if, even if you are doing daily routine right we even when we do analysis we feel that this is way faster than actually loading data into python doing all that no no python, python we slow. only use python. it for the plotting purpose no even with pandas right we largely use it because of its plotting functionality not because its data processing functionalities yeah, with yes, python the other problem it doesn't use all the cores so it's a different problem Yep. Recently, I was doing project, and after that, I want to count that how many lines I have written. So mm -hmm. I have used these commands to count how many lines I have written. Yes, WC works like a charm, right? Very easy. Yeah, there there were many file, and there were many folder inside many files. So first, I use find mm -hmm. command to find all the HTML pages, all the Python files, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then I pipe it. Then I count it, execute it, the the number of line, and after that pass is to paste, and then use BC to compute some. Mm -hmm. Can you show us that example if you have it handy, just for the students? This is a revision session, but you know that will incorporate two, three, four, five different concepts in one go. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I can show that from my phone. I am logging. Yeah, yeah. Even if you show the script, right, that is also fine. Yeah, so where were we? We were looking at, at we jumped right directly into fourth, fifth, this sixth and seventh week instead of going through fourth and fifth week. Is my screen visible? Okay. Yeah, now it is. So just tell us, you know, what this is uh, while you are typing. I am going to my music folder. There is all this file, and under this, I want to find all the HTML files. So find dot means you are looking into current working directory. Right. Then hyphen type, you're specifying what should be your extension, basically. Is everyone able to see his screen? OK. So basically what he is doing, if you look at find dot dot means in the current directory, then hyphen type, you can either do file or directory, right? In this case is he has put F, F stands for file. And then dash name, he's telling what all files you want to look at. So all the HTML files you want to look at, okay? Yeah, hello. Rate, can you explain the hyphen O, hyphen name, and this? like while you type this for them to understand? No, maybe he's using the same phone for the. Meeting. Yes, yes. No, the voice was echoing, I think, which is why he must have muted it. Yeah. Am I audible now? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so I initially want to all the uh, all the file and folder names. Sorry, all the Python and uh, HTML names. So for that, I use this hyphen O and name star dot py. 
but in in this way uh, also the my uh, library is coming music and way so i can pipe it to wc minus l sorry i can now i can execute the command that is wc minus l number of line on these files am i audible sir yeah yeah so just tell them what exec is doing here you know take your time to break it down yeah so i am so, I, you know, i am now executing for, wc minus l means i am wanting number of lines so this is calculating number of lines so now i want only the first field so for that i will use cut with delimiter space and first field i will be taken and after that i will pipe it to paste with in single line with delimiter as a plus and then i can pipe it to get all the sum so this is 2000 line and and if i want number of characters i can replace it with m um, Can anyone uh, help him? Uh, help him with awk instead of using cut, right? Cut, bc, and paste. Can you use awk after your first command? What sir? Awk, awk command, a w k. So instead after of cut. doing bc, cut, yeah, yeah. Just after the first command, right? After the find command, use awk. Delete all of that. and just print the output on the screen yeah no no print the output first for them to see what all columns are there yeah. so all of these columns you have first column and the second column and this space separated you can simply use awk uh, you need to pipe it so he needs to take the first column and then add it how should he do so the he addition anyone he can initialize a variable and begin or maybe not initialize at all and, and for every line he can just uh, add to that uh, variable and then add in the end block he can print that variable yeah so the addition should be or directly i can do right yeah yeah you need not yeah, directly define also the... because yeah initialization is not required in awk is it correct yeah, the sum just yes. uh, use the previous one now no the one which you had with the yeah with bc so you can just simply use another op command to take care of all the three commands all together okay 
good very good so this is very good one of the use cases uh, which he has shown any doubts you guys want to ask him or everything was very clear after the command is written it becomes very clear yes the trick is in hello writing the command for the beginning so it's almost like english right like we have seen these somewhere and we we see them in front of us we know what they are but then <laughs> remembering them you know constructing them is the challenge yeah so the point here is like you can see that he so there was this uh, wc minus step, right? m and wc minus c what is the difference between both m is for character and no c even the way he has you and use of all together but if he has karthik so you can just take a look at these commands and you can do all of these small you know what do you call in investigations on your files your folder it becomes easy okay uh, does anyone have any questions on the find command he used or exec command because that was one of the question uh, right see so in the the exec command we have the curly braces so they are representing possibly like whatever the find command is finding right but then why are we ending it with the slash and the semicolon yeah that is the syntax okay that is how a find command ends with a slash and a that is just slash a and a semicolon or you can also use plus huh yeah rithik go ahead you answer that way rithik yeah that execute is the ways uh, in lecture told after execute we need to end okay but like without it if, if we are not using execute we do not need to use it like it's just only for yeah if you not use it, then no need okay so yeah uh yeah hello can anyone so, want to yeah go ahead rithik uh, will we have a session tomorrow like to discuss the mock questions uh, uh, uh tomorrow sure i'll just uh, ask the team to conduct probably i won't be available uh, but uh, mostly krishnan will take that session at what time would you like to have because evening would be uh, that will be just a you know a night before your exam is that okay so like yes, not sir. in the night maybe in the evening maybe like before so say before 2 to 7. 4 yeah a 2 to 4 would be fine okay okay so i'll just ask whether he is available at that time and i'll ask him to conduct a session on mock okay if you guys have any queries on that we will also take a look at uh, that there so i the, the two important concepts are left okay shell variables Uh, and the uh, arrays. So, anyone wants to elaborate on arrays first? Then we'll go and look at the shell variables. Anyone? How do you define shell arrays? How do you call them? A standard case. so we just like uh, take uh, like like the normal brackets we just say that a equals or array equals that make it done in the parenthesis with space yeah parenthesis yeah okay just let's just take a look at one case okay i'll just share my screen you guys tell me what i should do i'll just keep following and then we will discuss on it one by one okay
yeah so yeah this was a good example right yeah maybe i'll what i will do this was the data which we worked with what was that dash then g close okay let's take this as a data okay so i have this data in txt and i want to do some mathematical calculation on it maybe you know add them all together like what he had done and i want to use arrays i want to iterate through all of it or maybe i want to store them into arrays right indexed arrays and only alternate element should be added not the consecutive so how do i go about it use the read array command v or oh, we need to first create script right okay uh Tell me, what should be the first step? Use the read array command. Read array minus t, then give the name of the array and pipe. I mean, redirect it to from the data dot txt or whatever. Read array. Uh, no, no, together, together, together. Yeah, read array minus t. Hmm. Then give the name of the array, whatever you want. Okay. And then less than sign. Mm -hmm. And then what did you name that file? Data dot mm. yeah. Next. Now what do you want to do? Like Every alternate add. element I want to add. Uh, can we just first check if this is working or not? Okay. Then what should I do? Echo. Read array dollar. Eco data, dollar. right? Yeah, no, Eco read, uh, data, data, yeah, data. Sorry, data at the rate at no, it should be within uh, square brackets and there should be, I think, uh, curly braces around data, data. Yeah, 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 and then uh, next, just that. So, what does it do? It should uh, just come at it. Print no, out the like entire elements. Add prints. I'm seeing read array for the first time. Yeah. All the values of the uh, array data. In a line? Mm, not in a line, perhaps. Or one by one. Uh, every um, um, separate lines, I think. Okay. Let me just check whether I have read array. And then, because nobody knows about it, let's do man. No manual entry. So, if there is no manual entry, what should I do? Help. Help. Yeah, help. Read lines from a file into an array variable. Synonymous for map file. Read array hyphen n count hyphen o origin s count. Okay, we don't know about all of these options actually. Actually, the more. read array will take the uh, new line character or uh, at the end of every uh, data point. So just to remove that, we use a minus t option. Minus t. Yeah. This one. Yeah. Okay, so do you know where the information is about this? More information? I read it up from the internet. Uh, <laughs> stack, stack overflow. Stack.overflow. Okay, data script. Okay, so we need to ch mod data.
So it is just giving one single line, right? Basically, maybe. Yeah, in one line. Okay. And what if I want to give it in the one by one? You have to run a loop, I guess. Sure. Is oh, there no. any other option? Uh, you remember, I'll just, I'll just check. If you want to put everything in one single line, that is what at is what we use. What is the other thing which we use to go through all the array? So if I do like this, right? For so like for your data, for in, data in this array data or values in data. You yes, should then. At you have to do that, yeah. Curly braces and at dollar curly braces, then echo dollar value or values. Yes, sir. Dollar values, then we'll have to pipe it to the Is it dollar value or values in here? The so dollar values. Values. Am I missing in spelling? Two, All right. Two, 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 two is missing. What else is Ford missing? Man, do done, and then we also have to like if we want to put it in a like we have to also uh, pass the look. Okay, we have already created the array, so yeah, fine. So this is printing one by one. While if you just do add here, it will just print everything in one line. But I, I think there is an option by which you can also print uh, in new line, right? Or uh, there is not. Sir, minus n, eco minus n. Sorry? Eco minus eco n. Eco minus n. What does eco minus n do? Oh, sorry. Angle and character will be omitted. Did something there. Oh, I ate up the dollar. Still not there. OK, anyways, so what we, what we wanted to do, every alternate data should be added. So. Uh, what's the next step? Hello. You we'll have to skip the alternate data, so maybe like. Uh, this is index array, right? So we have to uh, see go only only like uh, for the even uh, index indices. So let's just, you know, instead of printing all of these values, right? I want to print the, uh, what do you call? The index uh, uh, and then uh, what that index stores in data. So tell me what should I do here, echo? The index is? Dollar. Open brackets, exclamation sign. Yeah, then data, then enter it. Yeah, close the braces. Well, the value is, and now to print value. 
this values is it just no data value dollar values no hmm sorry so we are looking at already values right in data we wanted to have index values will definitely have values right that is what we do uh, with this so let's just run it the index is one two three four up to 56 the values so so is this correct are we missing something in this the index value for the current one right hmm. so there is so no way the, it, maybe there is no way side of knows. side of data inside of this instead of at the rate maybe we put value not sure dollar value hmm. It is not building index. No, not working. Hmm. Any ideas? Because there is basically no, uh, if you look at the values, right? There are what, how many numbers? Eight numbers, right? That index is not present. So simply it is not printing that value here. We want to go with whatever index uh, it has. So, yeah, any idea? So what what was we had at here, right? Like you need not just look at it. Okay, look through. I I want you to participate. So you see that your index is starting from zero. It is going all the way through to fifty six. So maybe what we can do? I think we could just use a regular for loop instead of doing in. No, I mean that particular so expression. Do not use the exclamation mark. Sorry? So do not use the exclamation mark. Like if we put value right inside of it. Like the when we put values inside of it, because we are already using dollar, do not use dollar values. And mm. do not use exclamation mark. Mm. Else we can take it out of the loop. Mm. Which loop? This for loop. If we want so do not use dollar. Do not use dollar. Excuse in, me. In, 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 in the values. But it should in, be data bracket values, values simply. Yes. Here. So not here. In, in, in yes, the, yes. the index is data. Hmm. Not there. It should be. The eco then, part. Eco part. In the eco hmm. part. After the do, hmm. uh, yeah. Remove this extra dollar uh, in front of values. Hmm. Nope. Still not working. Just look up for the format. Sir, okay. Uh, you sir, are missing something. Uh. Sir, you can do one thing. For values in, uh, write the name of the array. Okay. For values in data, hmm. then just write it data for values in data. Hmm. Just okay. remove like this. So. I hope you have to remove everything only in data what? in for values in data. Okay, then do echo the index is sir. What is the dollar value? The index? Only dollar value. Only dollar value. Only dollar value. Remove everything. So we not print the value. Mm. Yeah, and while the value is then right here, a dollar within within curly braces data and then a square bracket value. Yeah, this should work. I like think. so. Yeah. Index is value. So it is essentially. Sir, what, sir, what if what if we change the approach? What if we loop through the index? 
yeah we that's what i said like if we look through the index so how do you look through the index like we do this uh, that exclamation mark and then add the rate like because when we were doing that we were printing the entire thing right so you no know, yeah that uh, square brackets and then add the rate there was some use of hash also before yes. the data so <laughs> because now we have these uh, this value then Excuse we me. can use uh then even just if we try to execute we'll get something yes but, it, it, but remove a dollar from values oh from here yeah it is just a normal string yes so uh, this values this is values right D dollar values right dollar values here but uh, instead of that uh, the curly braces right Mm. so this make this dollar values mm. and then in that uh, dollar data square bracket dollar values remove the dollar or maybe just we can just execute and see or i don't know maybe remove the dollar and then we we, we check that mm. because it is not a variable right which one yeah there is a it variable is a, right you are defining it as a variable here yes 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 there is a variable okay now what you are doing you are not iterating through the values but you are iterating through the index hmm. so your values will become index and you can call like how do you call the array we call by uh, putting the index right what if i want to call by value the index that take a look at it how do we do it? but usually if you want to look through indexed value right this is the correct approach to go so in that case in the last uh, values you can remove the dollar it should print the value of the uh, which one index array the last one yeah the very last no 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 they're not they're not there in the next line the echo mm. the very last value if you remove dollar it should now start accessing the array using the index i think it will move the dollar before mm. yeah mm. now it should access the what data array using using values as index values as index no no we just saw right right when we use like this it is working it is working fine we look at this this was your output the index okay. is 42 while the value is mm. so this was that where is that do you remember the data file or oh, financial data something like that right cat the financial records.csv that's.csv yeah now i want to store the data with respect to this value so this should be like this whole should form one string and this should uh, this should be the value so i want to build an associative array so uh, before we go there right just take a look. we are using read array here right what else can we use we can loop through it we know about while read line right yeah yeah it was there in the opp Which, one yeah so if you use that you should be able to read each of the line into the array so essentially what do you need what what will you need in that scenario hmm I yeah. think while read line, while read line, and that, then do, and then uh, you you use this uh, the operator to direct data into it. Mm. So because while if you line, can, so in this scenario, right? Just let me go here. I'll just what about? Uh, while read line read 
line and then do and do whatever Next. you want to uh, do whatever you want to do inside and then uh, no like now we are reading a line okay of a file. line we have to add like because we have to like uh, in in the array whatever the array's name is if you want an associative array yes so you will do the yes. add um, array and uh, uh, well it's much easier doing it with no no but... now in this scenario if you look at this right uh yeah that's yes. the beauty of hawk there are so many things you can expedite it. but you should also still know this so we need to define array first i want to define an index array you tell me how to define it declare so just just to do array and then uh, the parenthesis like array equals parenthesis that should declare it. Uh, minus small a is not mandatory, right? Yeah, that's the mm, capital A for uh, hash that is required. Okay. So this is enough. Minus okay. a, the name of array can also declare it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Declare. So tell me the standard way. Okay. So declare so minus a. Okay. ARR. Declare minus, minus a, a ARR. ARR. That's it. Then that's it. Okay. That defined your index array. Now we are doing while read line. Do. Now I want to uh, what? Store uh, for each of the index, right? Store the value. How will you do that? Sir, we have to like, uh, like array plus equals that uh, whatever value we want to put inside of parenthesis. Yeah, the AR. Plus equals. Uh, array plus plus, we can also do it, right? No, no, like plus plus, no, 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 like we have to, we are inserting inside of the array, right? But what we are inserting, the line. So the maybe we use the line variable here. No, you'll put okay. array. I think you'll put array and bracket. Just like if I again, I'm just going back to walk. So a yeah, so the bracket is there, yes, not square bracket. Like uh, no, you can uh, use square uh, bracket and you'll put the variable, uh, the line variable in that, and then you uh, you associate it any way you want. So let's say uh, you know uh, the line is let's say x y z. So it'll be add square bracket x y z. But for will it be an index array? Yes, it it will be associative index. I think it will be like a dictionary. But we want it on an index array. No, no, we want to have an index array. Not associative array, is it? No, no. Sir, First what index the... array. Uh, look at the oh, uh, associative array. So uh, what this uh, array dollar zero plus plus will do? Array what dollar zero plus plus? Where hmm. is it? Like uh, uh, we use an awk, right? Uh, hmm. Array bracket dollar zero, then plus plus to get uh, uh, array dollar so bracket. Declare, uh... So bracket uh, within bracket, uh, there is dollar zero, right? Yeah, dollar zero means entire line basically hmm. in awk. So here you can declare a common line. variable outside. You can declare a count variable outside, initialize it to zero, and then just keep iterating through it. Yes. In yes. the loop, if you want an index. Yes, that will. Or you can start at one. Mm -hmm. You can uh, you can declare count equal to one outside, and then mm -hmm. keep iterating through count. So. No. So count. Equal to, one. equal to no, uh, one no space mm. equal to one and mm. then do add uh, bracket count and then do count plus plus and then it should work no no what next a we need to first R, read the line should be capital R, right it's the special character mm. uh, add dollar count add dollar count add Add bracket dollar count. Add bracket dollar count. No bracket dollar count. 
square bracket no when you read line right read line is like you haven't completed the first syntax itself so Can are we storing the, the sir sir sorry are we storing the entire line or a part of the line so right now the full line is just one number but we can't add no sir this, case. yeah we can't add the the file on which we are working what what was that cat data .txt i think this is yeah oh. so each of the line is just a number okay so it should be indexed after this so what essentially we are trying to do here is we are trying to build uh, a shell script which will essentially do uh, Uh, with what uh, we did with the redirect command okay now most of you don't know about redirect command neither the information about how to use it is available in the help text so if you try and go ahead and try to use it in the exam it will be difficult but you definitely do know about while read line command i'm asking you while read how will you use while read line command to read each of the element uh, each of the line as an array so basically i want here say i if i define that variable to be values it should be like values Dollar here line. like so so you tell me these like whatever values which are read by this uh, while loop should be present here and only after that dollar line uh dollar line where in which line array plus equal to yeah. dollar line Array plus equals to dollar, dollar line. line instead of values. You mean to say it should be dollar line? Okay. No bracket. Why do you need bracket? Uh, how no. do you define array? No. Element of array. Array should have an index, no, sir. No, but do we need to have a bracket while we are adding an element to an index? Yeah. yeah so how do you define array? array? We Let's go that. to very basic. Okay. okay, how do you define an array? Say I want to define an array with index one, two, three, which will store uh, value A, B, C. Tell me how should I do it? A R R. Plus index one. A R R plus zero equal to A. A R R square bracket zero. Square bracket yeah. zero equals to a. Square bracket one equals to one equal b. To b. Like this. I guess it should be within dollars, right? Dollar array. No, no. We are just defining the array right now. I just wanted to define an array, indexed array, which will go through the index and it will store value a, b, c. This is how this is how we define array. and say if i want to define it such that everything is in one single line uh arr equal to yeah. uh, parenthesis round bracket a space b space c just just tell me what arr equal to arr equals, equals to, to no no space Okay. I think no space. Mm. Uh, round bracket, A space mm. B space C. They should do. I oh, just I commented. So. Out. Yeah, they should do. Are Mean, meanwhile, you know, those people who already acquainted of this, look up for the uh, while read command. Okay, this is not correct. Whatever you have told me is not correct. So I should I just do echo? Echo dollar what? A R R. A R R. At all of them at once. Hmm. Sorry. Hmm. So let's give this. One as I read two. Okay, should I do? 
do I need to declare this as also index array here for ARR2? Yeah, is this fine? Sir, you haven't uh, uh, done ARR2 at the rate, like didn't change it in echo command. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, in both the scenarios, this is the way you define it. Now you tell me how do I define an uh, associative array? Here are three. Where this A, B, C are storing the values 0, 1, 2. Hmm. Just uh, ARR A equal to 0. Declare we need to do as this. capital A ARR 3. Now, ARR3 ARR3 is equal to? Hello, ARR3A is equal to 0. I know that. I don't know how to do. A? ARR A equal to 0. ARR3B equals to 1. ARR3C equals, equals to 2. 2. Yeah, so can anyone tell me the other way of doing this? Hello. I think something like this, right? Am I doing it right? Not found users before. Hmm? It's just I'll like uh, declaring a dictionary in Python. You tell me, is this right or wrong? Yeah, I mean, in Python, and this is how we declare it. Hmm. I mean, except for the curly braces and parentheses. But... Yeah, it is a right, I think. So it appears to be right. Like, it appears to be logical if somebody was making <laughs> this language. <laughs> But have you seen uh, an example? I think Sir has covered one example uh, of such kind, right? Or is he not? This. Okay. So, is this right, or should I need to put a bracket here for a B and C? Sir, as like Sudanshu sir said, right? Try like execute and find out. Well, except normally, RMR. normally in arrays, uh, the field separator is a space, but in this case, I'm not sure. So. Okay, so just say, even by your advice, let's go and say echo uh, the ARR4 is what? Dollar ARR4 hat. Okay. Did we do for three also? Same statement? No, right? Let's do this here. Echo. The ARR3 is dollar ARR3 at. Okay. It should work, right? Let's check it out. So. Our array four has issue, but uh, the error one, error two, error three is also fine. Error four is wrong. Hmm. So Sir, any instead of comma, we can use space. Will it work? Just space. Yes. Okay, let's do that.
space has delimiter. Mm -hmm. What it is saying? Must use subscript when assigning associative array. Anyone? No one has looked it into the notes. Hello, am I audible? Anyone there? Yes, sir, you're audible. No, we are here. We just don't know what to say. Just. Now should it work? Yeah, it should work. I need uh, sir, a comma. Uh, no comma. Colon it should work. Uh, colon ki jagah hum log wo use kar sakte hain na uh, equal to. Equals to nahi hota hai isme when you are doing it in this way, right? Yeah. No, I think equal to will be needed. Is right. Hmm. Equal to sure. equal to will be needed. So yes, not, sir, colon put equal to. So this is not Python, basically. Yeah. Mm. Okay. This is one case scenario. Okay, now it is working. Mm -hmm. Say, if I want to remove this square bracket, will it work? Maybe last time we never needed this to begin with. Yeah, I think it is needed. Contacts is very specific mm -hmm. in Bash. It mm. won't so the conclusion is you have you to need to have it. square brackets you don't need to have commas you can define it in one line right hey sorry yeah what was the conclusion it's like the shorthand for what we did with array 3 <laughs> exactly so instead of we repeating error we are just putting that one by one and there is no you know commas between the two strings but there's one way you can declare arrays now that we know how to declare arrays let's go back to our original question i wanted to do what okay. yeah while read line anyone who has the correct arr Mm -hmm. No, first syntax of the while read line. I want, you know, exact syntax. I just want to print the lines. Each of so the like, lines, let's just we print. We also have to do like done, like while read line, do done. Oh, I'll just do like this. Complete the loop. Yeah. Uh, let's okay. do that. Yeah, what? Read minus R. But I've never used that. capital line. I mean, I always use normal line. Read minus R line. Okay, let's so do that. I also, I also just tell me line. whatever you have used. We will do that. Okay. Why read, read minus line? R. Read minus R. Normal line. Minus R for what? Small R. Hmm. So, Small R. Okay. Yeah, it should. Actually, uh, it reads recursively, like. If there is a directory and the yeah. subdirectory, it is used for this minus r is used for reading it recursively. Okay, so should I keep it I'm there? For an... I think it should not so be you can use, used. Uh, you, you can use IFS uh, input file separator. Uh, we don't need it because just one single line. You were reading from a file, right? Not a directory. Or... Yes, we are reading from uh, from a file. Yeah, so the this uh, the I think they should work then. And this uh, R plus and dollar line, the line will be smaller. And do and then done. In done, you will then direct the and uh, you will direct the line, uh, direct the file to it. Yeah, should work. Okay. And uh, we also want to print it, right? We just don't want to keep it there. So we'll so just take echo, this out first. We just want to echo first. Okay. Then we will go to the next step. Okay. Echo. Dollar line. Dollar line. Okay. Just run. So this is just simply cat out the data of the file, which it is doing. Now that that is a success, now you tell me uh, what we have to do. 
Yeah. Sir, outside maybe we'll print the array. Like inside, you have to uncomment the array. So, what do you want in the array? You want an associative array? No, this no, will be just and let me declare. Declare a hey, sorry. Indexed array. Okay. Capital A. Ah uh, no, yeah, this is indexed array. We just want to see if, uh, and then I want to echo it, right? Echo. Dollar. Dollar. Act. Yeah, array. Act. Done. Mm. Okay, let's just print it out. So there you have it. Your whole array. Now, what if I want to just call zeroth element? Just call zeroth element. Then echo dollar arr. Second element, maybe. Right, we wanted to do initially what alternate addition, right? Yeah, there it is. So, what zeroth is zeroth, right? Yeah, one second, second is second. Okay, so we are good with our we have our index array, and our index array now what we want to do is we wanted to add alternative. So now we need to have an counter which will go through, right? The array. So tell me what should be the code now. This should be very easy for you people. For, for, for which loop? Yeah, for I you can use a for loop also. For bracket I, I equal is equal zero. to zero. Mm. I less than um, dollar uh, yeah um, dollar r bracket at Total hash. 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 Yeah, hash. Oh yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Hash. I plus plus. Yes, sir. I plus plus. Then. Uh, if you're using alternately, you can. Uh, plus two. I plus equal to two. Yeah. I plus two. Two two, two I plus plus. Like so. Three times or four times? No, 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 no. Then I plus plus and I plus plus comma. No, no. You okay. can put I plus equal to two, or there's another syntax using dots. I am forgetting that. I plus plus comma I plus plus. Okay. A lot of people are telling me this. This is the right way to do. So I would say do. Then done. Tell me, uh, what should I do now? So let's just add. You want to add, right? So you want to Michel add to sum, an array. Initialize the sum to zero before the loop. Okay. Hmm. Sum is equal to zero. Done. Next. Sum is equal to sum plus sum plus i. Some plus array i. Dollar array. What i? Dollar i, I think. Dollar i. Should it be dollar i? What what? Dollar i, okay. Done. And echo sum. Okay. Hmm. What's the issue with the? Is this the for loop or do we need to have double brackets? Hmm? Double brackets, yes, I forgot. 
So your sum is really, really long. Can anyone verify? Is there any way? We, uh, so let's just take a smaller chunk of data. What was that? We can get a CQ. We could do then bench calculator, right? Hmm? Yeah, BC. Is it printing it properly? It, it doesn't seem to be adding. It's, it's just printing some plus. Yeah, some plus is equal to something. Oh, yeah, yeah. It is not it's doing not it. It's not printing it properly. Yeah. Yeah. So, how do you evaluate? Dollar, oh, add dollar parenthesis, sum is equal to dollar. Double parenthesis. Double. Yeah. Not there. Not there. Oh. Not there? So, no, not, not there. So? No, after there? the after the equal to sign. Oh, here also we need dollars. No, no, no. Here also we need dollars. Just remove from the start. Remove the dollar also from the start. Hmm. Sum is equal to dollar, double parenthesis. No, 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 no. Nothing at the start. Because you just want to reassign it. Yeah, sum is equal to dollar double. The dollar will be outside the parenthesis. Sorry. So the dollar sum, just move the dollar from the sum and move it. Yeah, and move the dollar out. Well, you can, yeah, this should work. What about ARR? Yeah, I mean, dollar or no dollar should not, it doesn't matter normally, but. Now it is big. Yeah. So we want to validate it with data too. Every alternate we said, right? Sum is zero. Oh, data to truth is a file. Still sum is zero. Are you doing any mistake somewhere? So data two, does it have anything? Can you catch it? Nope. I thought we ran that command. Okay, yeah. so is it 25? Uh, the alternates, yes, so four and nine and 14 and 23. It's giving 23. One plus three, four plus five, nine plus seven, 16 plus nine, 25 is correct. Okay, good job. So let's revise this. Okay. So what is the while read line, read R line, then you have ARR. We are just, we are not putting index here, right? It is automatically going from zero to whatever it is, and then dollar line. And then we are using for loop with double parenthesis and sum. Yeah, we don't need to use the indexing array. Uh, when you are assigning the value to the array, you don't need to use index. ARR plus equal to no, 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 we don't need. Okay. Uh, what about that's why the next question was say, we, uh, index, we want to do Suppose if we use index, is it wrong? Which index? Suppose I write count is equal to one year before the loop, count equal to one, and I say array count equal to dollar line. <laughs> That should also be fine. You are assigning uh, index manually to the array. Yes, yes. So that should work, no? Hmm. Okay. So should we do the index array or should we stop it here for today? I mean, if Siddharth, if you know Python, then uh, you can try it. It should work. No, with indexed array, what 
you have to use a little different approach, right? With especially that data file. What was that data file? Uh, data one was it? Just data. Financial data, I think. Oh yeah, that one. Yeah. CSV. So in here, what we wanted, so because we wanted to have unique entries, right? I wanted to combine these two columns and then use this as the key and this as the value and then do uh, the calculation. Or at least, you know, uh, so the can, one more quick question, okay? Can you guys create something like this? This is just a fake data I created using uh, basic shell script. So the company variable varies from A to E. How do you do that with brace expansion? Brace is A in double dot E. Hmm? Company brace. Not like. Um, company brace. Company brace. So okay. the brace has to be only on the part, like, obviously, you know, and here. Yeah. So, A A A A A A A. yeah. Okay. So this should. Oh, sorry. I mean, echo. Echo. <laughs> echo. Yeah. And what if I want it on a separate line? Uh... I'm not sure. That minus n maybe. Like no, no. Minus. Do you know how does this work? Process expansion. Take, how parameter work. expansion works usually is that see this is one field. This is another field. Okay. The way shell works is that. It will work on individual field, okay? First, echo. It will look at echo, okay? Echo is as is. But it identifies that there is an expansion going on in here. So it will expand all of this first, and then it will execute on echo command. So echo is, you know, just printing whatever is being expanded in here. That's why you, you are getting all of this uh, in one line. So a simpler way of doing this is just tr command, where we can we know that space can be easily changed to new line okay uh, how about date command this is one of the thing which i think sir taught in the very first beginning right uh, lectures so what is the style we have year we have i think i suppose this is month and this is date Okay, separated by dash. That is all I want from this date command. How will you do? We can use uh, percentage times to get specific. Yeah. Mm -hmm. format is given here. So we don't want this. What we want is uh, Sunday, January, not like this. Percent D capital D. Let's see what it is. So, if you look at the man page, it tells you that this is what the format is. So, basically, if I want in the same way. I just simply do percent Y, then percent M and percent D, right? Yeah. Yeah. So percent Y, then dash, so then okay. percent M, M, then dash, and, and then percent D, D, right? This yeah. gives me gives me in this format. Now I don't want today's date. Okay. What I want is a range of date. How will you get that from date command? Hmm? 
No, it is entirely possible. Okay, so a lot of time, what you want to generate, you know, a lot of test data by yourself. A lot of time, what people do is they will simply go to a website and you know give all of those inputs and download it. But you can easily create with a small scripts like this, where you can uh, just create all of this on your own. So say you want to know. What other approach you can use to create this apart from this date command? Let's say the you don't echo, know about it. The echo that you are using, hmm. A to E comma. So you can say echo company A to E hmm. comma. Hmm. And then uh, bracket again. So now you have uh, 2021. So 2010 to 2020. Okay, okay, let's just see if this works. So I see that it is working. Okay, company, comma, 2010. All of this is happening. Yeah, dash. Then dash one want? to dash one to twelve. Double one dot to 12. twelve. Dash. Then dash. Then now one, uh, one to through twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. Yeah, and then okay. uh, comma and uh, why is it not working? Oh, not dash. Yeah. yeah, then comma. Yeah, I don't know what the last field was. The uh, numbers. I don't know how to generate yeah. random numbers. So I think uh, print env will print all the environment variable, right? Sorry. Done. Uh, there is something called uh, random. Okay, a function is there in bash. Let's try okay. to just check. Which generates the random number the way you want. But it's called dollar you... capital random. But how will you combine that with? Uh... The expansion parameter expansion. Mm. How will you combine it with parameter expansion? You forget about that. Just take a look at it. Okay, what your output is? It's just the one single line. Okay, that is not what you want. Right, you want each of the two column to be printed on the separate line. That you are doing uh, tr uh, to separate it. That we can Let's add it in TR, space and slash in. Space, slash in. Yeah. Okay, now this is there. All you need to do is figure out a function to call at the end of your expansion in the echo command itself. Yeah. So I think the comma, the dollar random, there are two ways to do it. I just forgot its actual syntax. We won't see it in here, right? Uh, man, bash, grep, c10. And what you are saying? Mm, random. Mm. Each time this parameter is referenced, a random integer between 0 and 2767 is generated. The sequence of random, random number. Mm. Does it give you a range? Yeah, that is also there. So I just forgot exactly what that command is. But that also provides you with range. And if you see, that is uh, uh, what? what kind of number is that? It's a fraction, right? It's yes. not uh, integer, it's basically. It's a float. Yeah. Even that you can manage. So just try, you know, now you know half of the code. Try to see how you can generate the other half of the code with just dollar random. You'd be able to do it. So what you said before, what we just do? 
TR, uh, maybe comma, dollar. If I think if you give, uh, uh, I'm now just looking this up. Uh, I think if you give a dollar random in curly braces, and then you can give a range as well. See, we are getting numbers, but we are not getting fractions. So we gave comma, we gave dollar random. No, but this random number, yeah. So how do you give range? Uh, you start with curl dollar curly braces. Random uh, after random, you gave a colon. The start, the start of the range, colon, the end of the range. So let's say thousand to nine nine nine. Start of the range is thousand. Colon double nine double nine. Close the curly brace. You have to close it. You have to close the curly brace. Curly brace. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing is coming. Am I doing it wrong? Uh, you had random. random. Yeah, yeah. Now it should work. Now you added a colon after random, no. right? Yeah, yeah. There's a colon after random. Yeah, I don't know if it works with this uh, parameter expansion actually, but it was working. No, it does work. Uh, it was working I, earlier. I have used it. So basically, this is one of the things which you can do. You can just create a lot of uh, random data just by using this. Even you can provide this information of date, right? Uh, whatever we have here in this particular format, right? In one of the, I think, previous year questions, we had this uh, in end up. So you can use this uh, as an input to the date command to get a date in a different format. Right, this is the format which you have. You want to convert it into some other format with date command. That is also possible. Okay, otherwise so, with awk, it's very easy. Awk is always, you know, it makes everything easy. <laughs> but with echo command, you can see that we we could do a lot of things just by you know one single line. A lot of things without using very complicated uh, code. OK, I think that's it for today's session. Uh, you guys had any other questions for me? I, I still, I think I didn't answer the associative arrays question, except that. Uh, well, some basic, uh, I don't know if, if you can share this, but some basic breakup of the, the, the exam in terms of the weightage. Normally, all the others tell us weightage. Sort of weightage as in, you know, uh, first four weeks, so much. Yeah, yeah. So, so you can say that first four weeks will be about 40% weightage. OK. And the last, uh, uh, you know, last three weeks, right? Uh, that will be a reminder of it. OK. Because your first four week actually has bash, right? Including that, uh, that oh. is about forty percent, and then rest is. Uh, so you have uh, regular, ex even regular expression comes in. I think it will be more than that. Your first four weeks, because in fourth week you had regular expressions covered, right? Yes. In third week you had redirections and all those covered up. So most probably it will be around sixty forty. Okay, fifth week was basically bash, and sixth and seventh are said and awk. Yeah, said and So it's basically so a few like questions on said and knock. Sixty percent from one to four, and then five, six, seven is forty percent. Yes, I I really wish you people do well with regular expressions. Um, a little bit tough, you know. At least beginner level set because advanced level set is not a part of this curriculum uh, itself. Even awk, very advanced stuff, we won't ask. Whatever material you already have, just study those. Uh, it will be basically based on that. Okay. The the one... bottom line is that you need to un, you know break the problem down and do little bit of data manipulation at the end of the day. Yeah. So just one question is around the man pages. Uh, will we be provided because uh, in well maybe for quiz I mean... it will be provided. 
uh, for all of the question wherever it is required right uh, all the relevant information will be provided to you right there in uh, in the question itself okay i think then it's a fair i mean it's quite fair so we should be able to do something there yeah so so with quiz 2 it shouldn't be a problem even with the whatever inputs you people have given us uh, with the opp1 we are taking that into account and we are looking into uh, redesigning the way we are doing opps also so not that you know you should see that everything is very simple or straightforward but you should see at least you should the amount of effort you put in you should be able to validate what all you can do uh, so uh, you should see uh, what do you call a graduation in difficulty as we uh, go along from first question to the last question i really appreciate that uh, yeah that should be very helpful thank you yes 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 sir mm -hmm. So also said the NTP the... should be like should should at least be at least eighty percent of the level of the OPP. It's not should be like the NPP is sure, very easy sure. and then OPP is different. Yeah, yeah. So what we are also trying to do, right? Apart from NPPs, right? NPP is basically what uh, how the terminal looks like, like, how the interface looks like, and how how you will you will you be you know, solving those questions. Uh, but for you, uh, for additional practice, right, we will be putting on at least few questions for you to practice. Uh, of course, the solution won't be provided. We want you to come up with a solution by looking at the problem. So we will definitely give you a lot of problem statements to work on. So you will basically have an input and what output should look like. And you need to come up with your own script uh, to do that. OK, and I really like the way uh, the batch is actually interacting in the session as well as among yourselves also. So I really want to see that more, that you guys coming up with ideas and discussing and even uh, working together to solve a problem. Because I feel that working by yourself a lot of time, whatever the next person can see is not what you can see easily. Uh, maybe it is because of the background or you're working too hard on a problem that you leave very simple iteration of a solution so while working together you guys may be able to you know uh, improve uh, like the basic idea is we really want you to take the key concepts from here and apply it everywhere very you know, wherever uh, you know the job becomes too tedious and this becomes too easy to use uh, for some of the use cases okay Okay, thanks. Thanks a lot to stay till the end. Uh, I'll try to come up with a session for tomorrow uh, and we'll update you soon. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you and good night. Good night, sir. Sorry. Good night. Yeah. I think yeah, yeah, good night. Good night. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> good night. Uh, have a good day. Bye bye. You too. Bye.